Thank you for listening to PoliticalStorm.com. I'm John Small. Have not had a chance to talk to you. I've, well, I shouldn't say that because I've had several chances. We've had the opportunity to do some wonderful interviews this week. But what I haven't had a chance to do this is to have a little heart-to-heart. Just me. Just you. Nobody's here. My son's not here. My wife's not here. I'm not even all here. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm here, but you know what I mean. Uh, some things that happened this week. Well, Bernie Sanders turned 75 this week. Happy birthday, Bernie. You know what? It's, it's really interesting how he was the guy that was against all these rich people, and now he's, he's retiring to his third house. Okay. Wow, that doesn't really quite seem to fit what you're for. This week, a new CNN poll has Donald Trump ahead of Hillary Clinton in the race to the White House. According to CNN, now this is what people refer to as the Clinton News Network, which is really, you know, I've, I've got to be serious. I've been watching it lately, and it is just ridiculously, despicably for Hillary and against Donald Trump. But they're still, in the CNN poll, if this is what they put out, 45% Donald Trump to 43% Hillary. So they've got Donald Trump ahead. If that's what it is, when they're like talking people out of liking Donald Trump, imagine what it really is. Oh, that brings me to this. If you didn't get a chance to watch the Commander-in-Chief, we can't call it a debate, what was it, forum? Uh, I did get a chance to watch it. We'll get to that in a second. But according to the American people, NBC News had a chance to do a little poll. They had 66,269 votes. 61% said Trump won. 39% said Clinton won. I want to say this. I watched it. I'm actually a little disappointed in both of them. And here's why. You're sitting in a room filled with veterans, and neither one of them said thank you to the troops. I mean, seriously? They were asking you questions. Each one of these people served in our military. Each one of them deserved a, Michael, thank you so much for your service. Janet, thank you so much for your service. Bob, thank you so much for your service. That's all you have to say. If you would have done that, you would have gotten my vote, but I say neither of you win. So Trump, 61%. Clinton, 39%. Now let's dissect this a little bit more. For those of you that didn't get a chance to watch it, you really should watch it. I'm sure it's online, and I think they're going to be replaying it this weekend on MSNBC. It was on twice the night that it was on. I recorded it, so I I watched the second half live. I tuned in too late. But then I recorded it the second time. But the thing that was interesting is between the times that I watched the second half and then I got a chance to watch the first half, I watched the middle part, and Rachel Maddow, Now, she's not a Trump fan at all, and she doesn't hide that a bit, but Rachel Maddow pointed out something that I agree with completely. This is what she had to say. Nicely matching the apples and oranges nature of our politics. (laughs) It's a good point, actually. I made a list of the questions that were asked, not just the the literal words that were used in the questions, but the actual topic that was discussed question by question. Almost no overlap between the two candidates. They were not asked the same things. They did not comment on the same things. I don't think they define these problems, these issues for the country in the same way. That's Rachel Maddow. She noticed that they were completely different questions. I noticed that too, Rachel. Here's the thing, apples and oranges you guys are talking about. Why wouldn't you have a forum where you ask Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton the same questions? Wouldn't that be a little more fair? But instead, it seemed to me like Matt Lauer was almost trying to give her an opportunity, you know, to sweep this email thing under the rug. People say that he attacked her. I don't think that he attacked her at all. As a matter of fact, in in one instance, he was even kind of like leading her to say a certain word. And then when she said that word, then he moved on with a question about that word. And I just thought, wow, it almost feels like these two practiced this in advance and she forgot her lines. And he's like trying to help nudge her back on track. I don't know. Maybe that's not what happened. It just seemed really, really weird to me. But it's also weird to me that Rachel Maddow and I agree on something. It, It was apples and oranges. They asked Donald Trump, certain questions they asked Hillary Clinton, completely different questions. Wouldn't it make more sense if you want to compare these two based on the same things to, I don't know, ask them the same things? When Hillary Clinton was speaking, she didn't have as many questions because she got to just have a filibuster and talk as long as she wanted to talk. And then finally, Matt Lauer would cut her off. When Donald Trump started talking, he would be, you know, four sentences into a question and Matt Lauer would cut him off. He wouldn't let him answer anything. So once again, I don't know what I was expecting because it is absolutely positively ridiculous that Matt Lauer was the one hosting this anyway. He is a Clinton Foundation contributor. I mean, this man has made donations to her foundation and probably to her campaign. 
yet he's the, you know, wink, wink moderator. No, that's that just doesn't seem right. What they should do when it comes to all of these things that are coming up, because we've got some debates coming up and every one of these is going to be really sickening to watch because they're going to have these liberals that are hosting the debate. They're going to throw softballs over to Hillary Clinton and they're going to throw daggers over at Donald Trump. That's what's going to happen. You know, it's going to happen. Why? Because it always happens. What they should do is they should get people that have absolutely no agenda, maybe even people that have nothing whatsoever to do with politics. I mean, the moderator really shouldn't be steering the bus on this anyway. They should just be asking the questions. So you could have anybody do that. You could have a second grader do that. And honestly, the second grader would probably do a better job. And maybe they could get some points for class or something. Now, back to the Commander-in-Chief Forum. I really do hope they do this for the next election in 2020. But one of the things that I hope they'll do is consider this, NBC, have both candidates on the stage at the same time. I mean, why does it need to be one-on-one and then one-on-one? Why not have the moderator in the center and each candidate? And then it would be really easy to ask the same question because you'd ask one question, this one would answer, that one would answer. I just think that would make a whole lot more sense. And then they both have the exact equal opportunity to do everything rather than one goes first, one goes second. You know, And I guess Donald Trump won the coin toss and he decided to go second. And you'd think that he maybe would have been watching backstage and realized how ridiculous it was that Hillary didn't say thank you to any of the service members, but apparently he didn't notice that. I noticed that. I know other people noticed that. I know Facebook definitely noticed that. And I'm sure Twitter noticed that. I'm not on Twitter as much as I am on Facebook. But I can say people absolutely positively noticed that. Got a few weeks to go until our first actual debate. They will be coming up here soon, and I'm sure we'll be having a chance to chat about that before you know it as well. And if you've got things that you'd like to visit about, you can certainly make comments below the podcast at politicalstorm.com. And the best way to have your voice be heard is go to politicalstorm.com and click on the top right corner of the page. You'll see up there there's a thing where it says you can be a contributor. Do that. Write a blog. Do a podcast. Record some videos. You have the ability to do that because in this election, you have a choice. But in this election, politicalstorm.com also gives you a voice. Use it. Thank you for listening to politicalstorm.com. I'm John Small.